Uh, hello. Uh, so today is uh, 12th July 2020, and uh, today uh, I'm going to present the last tutorial for the final 10th chapter of the book Nanobrain, uh, the making of an artificial brain made of a time crystal. And uh, as you may have understood that uh, chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 actually contains uh, all the major parts of the invention of artificial brain. Chapter 1 is introduction. It just randomly comes you with completely new kind of um, concepts. And chapter 10, what I will cover today, is also again um, random philosophies and then um, a summary of the new kind of instruments that we used for the research. Um, in future, how do you like to see the theory of evolution and many other aspects which would be kind of a very popular version of the uh, main book that is from chapter 2 to chapter 9. So in that sense, today we are not very much stressed. We are not going to learn anything new. Um, uh, what we are going to do today is to sum up uh, part of it, part of the different things that we have described in other tutorials. So let me start with uh, figures one by one. Uh, figure 10.1 is, is, is the first artificial brain that we designed in 2014. Uh, it has a upper part and a lower part. It do, looks like an egg. So the commercial device that we want to build um, from the artificial brain, we will inject um, brain jelly on the top part of this and then lower parts are the sensors. You can understand from our human brain model in chapter 7, the complete time crystal model of the brain, that uh, uh, that, the <clears throat> that whole brain, every single functions of the brain is, are represented in terms of clocks, nested clocks, or phase cycles. And, um, and if we want to, uh, want to realize the human brain, the sensor part, the midbrain, and the upper brain has to be together. They need to need to come together because in case of normal computers, you can have other sensors, but what you don't uh, understand from the other uh, sensors is that those sensors which you purchase in the market, they normally convert the entire data in terms of a single string or single time temporal string. And um, so it's a it's a stream of bits uh, that goes through, and if we if we absorb that kind of information, then we would not be able to build that kind of brain that we want to build. So the secret recipe of constructing an artificial brain um, is actually in the construction of the sensors because we are capturing time crystals. So. Uh, as I explained many times in chapter 5 and chapter uh, 2, uh, chapter 2 is language and chapter 5 are incredible features. So we said that uh, um, you ask different questions. So earlier you used to ask uh, how much data that you have, all the signals that are coming in, I would like to see everything. But here in the artificial brain, we don't see everything. We try to see most dynamic points in a big data, we convert it into a 3D image. And we try to see the dark regions, mostly the pattern of dark lines where no information is there, how that pattern is evolving. So that geometry we look into, and then we try to understand it. So uh, how that geometry is changing, symmetry is breaking, and the new geometric shapes are, 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 are forming. So we look into that, and that geometric shape architecture we convert into a time crystal like shape that is a sphere and then many nested spheres and all these things so 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 that uh, kind of sensors we need to design and build we have detailed it how different cables will bring the connections and how uh, clocks will be arranged and those are described uh, in details in chapter 2 mm. So um, chapter two, um, it may appear that we are introducing a new language, but if you see majority of the um, figures that I described in chapter two are actually how would you design a, a time crystal analyzer. 
The time crystal analyzer is another product that we want to commercialize. Um, as you can understand that the chapter 10 of all my tutorials will be commercialization. What are the technologies that is going to come to market and what would be the impact on the whole world uh, because of this particular book and that will be uh, in chapter 10. So, so the so the sense time crystal analogy would be the, the most prominent product. So it, it will be just like a like a pen, uh, and uh, you will have um, uh, USB port. So enter data, and it will convert it into a three D shape, and then convert it into a uh, time crystal architecture. That is a nested spheres that we saw, and its sphere is a phase sphere, and there will be a clock rotating all around. So this is the new way of looking into the information. I repeat. And uh, if you are reading this book, uh, one thing you must understand from the very beginning to the end, that we are not looking into bits of information that you have been looking for the last 120 years. We are not considering the universe as a sequence of events. We are considering within and above. The events grow within and above. And that's kind of very, very important part of it. So, uh, so in that sense, in that sense, every single engineering devices that we will produce, right from the sensors to the uh, to the search engine. Suppose I want to build a search engine, just to replace Google or Bing or all the existing search engines in the world, and then new kind of search engine will actually tell you some kind of higher level intelligence which no algorithm in the world can. So, so one prime product is also searching the data. So if you have a sensor, of course you want to build a sensor. The sensor includes a time crystal analyzer or time crystal converter. But at the same time, you need to search also big data. So how do you search a different form of data, different waveforms of data? You convert everything into geometric shapes and look at the symmetries or prime symmetries inside those geometric shapes and you rearrange them. So time crystal analyzer would be an integral part of new kind of search engine also. So the knowledge that we have already in the world in terms of huge number of bits, they will be converted into few composition of geometric shapes. Uh, can you imagine the amount of data that will be shrinked? If you want to learn details about it, you have to go to chapter chapter 5 and then I have uh, one figure, one table on one chart dedicated exclusively how to reduce the big data and shrink it into a small uh, bits of pieces. Um, so, 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 so in that sense, uh, uh, figure 10.1a is actually the ache that we envision that every single human being in this planet Earth will be carrying with it. When you will be sleeping, uh, your virtual brain or, or your avatar. So that that egg will be your avatar. And just like in the avatar movie, uh, your brain was embedded into the hardware, mm, into the hardware of a physical body and that was going far and doing some work. You can do the same. But in our research, we are not interested in the whole robotics part. But we squeeze the whole sensor and muscles, everything into the bottom part of this egg uh, uh, sensors and then the brain jelly would be there. So it will go and learn. Figure 10.1b is about automated detection of, um, of, of a singularity point. Singularity is very key part of this book. The entire construction of artificial world where Things get undefined, hazy, dark, unknown. Uh, and those regions are normally bridged in the conventional science. I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't know? Okay. Then I know that? Okay. So I jump from I know this to I know that. And then in the dark region, I always bypass. So that is the current way of uh, doing science. But here... Uh, in this book, where we always check into periodicity of the events or loop of events, and then mm, then we we look into the singularity domain where it is extremely fuzzy. 
but uh, searching those singularity points i have described many times in the tutorials in many chapters of this book but still i would like to repeat i know that in the if you go through the tutorials of this 10 tutorials of this book you will find that one particular concept one few concepts one are, are repeating repeating and repeating actually we don't have many new discoveries or inventions only a few discoveries or inventions are there conceptual change and that is actually having a ripple effect on many different kind of technologies so the sensors at the core level of the sensors will actually it will ask who does it at which condition what it does and how it does and uh, then we try to find out unpredictable um, unpredictable um, things or events how do we find uh, a singularity point or um, a confusion um, conceptually confusion is uh, one event multiple possibilities which you cannot logically explain and all are contradictory to each other same event but it is producing or multiple different events and they converge and then create one output that you are saying so you can't say which one is the actual origin so you have confusion about the origin and you have confusion about the output either of the two or both always you are reaching towards a um, confusing system so basically you can imagine uh, a structure that would be like um, a lot of uh, outputs uh, circular outputs they are coming together and then forming a, a net where you are there and then the event that is happening uh, is going to different different uh, origin so origin and output good so i just draw something for you and then you can look into this and then you can understand so this is this is it mm. so output would be different and then the origin would be different so uh, so here is the confusion because multiple alternate possibilities are there and multiple multiple so you can you can find a confusion about it and also um, um, whenever you have a, a situation that uh, that you are um, uh, you can cognitively you can get it um, how it is happening you can sense it or you don't sense it and always confusion is about a state of mind it is not just what you observe but after observation, you bring it to the mind and you get a perception. Perception means uh, the pain was like this, absolutely. And I detected it as a circle and the circle has uh, one uh, white colored dot. Okay, And when it became like this, it, it becomes a pain. So uh, when our brain my brain registers this it always perceives this as a circle that i'm holding in my hand okay a, a sphere i'm holding in my hand and then it is this so um, so when i was holding it maybe i see a little angle and then maybe i imagine that it could be something else that i'm holding in my in my in my hand it may be this is small and then once you oh my god it's a big long thing so uh, it's not it's not the object it is about in my mind of what I perceive that is what Rishi Gautama 3000 year, years back suggested that confusion or sandeha is something a state of mind that goes inside your brain and after you register it then you find this kind of um, conical shape that I just showed to you that what the reality that you were perceiving so uh, mm, this is the perception perception and you find that uh, uh, so so the central part is perception and uh, this part is perception this part and then you have output wise and then in uh, origin wise mm -hmm. uh, origin wise there origin wise or output wise you have confusion so this here to find this architecture you ask four different questions that means who is doing it how uh, um, when when they, they did it and looking at the nature of the signal you got to find it out 
because you are devising an engineering and that is actually outlined here or summarized here if you would look at it that um, at which um, uh, who does it is the slowest group of clocks the large ones okay and uh, at which condition normally if set of symmetries are changing uh, you'll find that clocks and singularity points are changing with each other in a medium time domain then you say okay this will be telling the condition condition is always a rapid change of symmetries hmm. how it does is uh, uh, fastest group of clocks fastest singularity points fastest moving singularity points so the condition or the geometric shapes the singularity point changing triangle is becoming a square is becoming a pentagon and you are looking at it and then you are seeing that those kind of changes are happening but for that triangle to change into a square you find many many singularity points are changing uh, in the 3d geometric after you convert entire information into a geometric shape then you will find that these are the things happening so then you can form this uh, who does it at which condition what it does what it does clocks are connected to mechanical or other forms of um, forms of clocks that means um, you will find e pi phi symmetries are being arranged in in the in the transformation from of one geometric shape to another um, in the time crystal architecture that you have created from the input video kita running or somebody is singing so when this kind of things happen when you find that the e pi phi so different kind of resonance frequencies are there combined together and then they are uh, doing something in a particular time domain so uh, who does it which condition what it does how it does these four questions of 10.11 d 10.1 d uh, and actually uh, in four different time domains hmm. but they are interrelated uh, the geometric shapes that are major changes that are happening is uh, which condition then you can see that particular this kind of region that is happening and then singularity points are changing um, so you will say that um, uh, rapidly which you are changing is how and uh, when you find that those geometric shapes this one is made by electrical singularity that one is made by um, uh, solid based uh, propagation based singularity and other kind of singularities so all these different kind of singularities when interacting with each other and generating it then you say that um, you are able to detect it so naturally with some set of algorithm uh, you can instruct a sensor you can build practically a sensor which could be sold in the market that follows like figure 10.1b which can actually isolate so you can see four time domains so you get each time domain is isolated with each other mm, suppose one is in the uh, seconds or hours other is in uh, milliseconds other is in microsecond others are in nanoseconds or picoseconds so so basically mm, what happens is each time domains are very isolated mm, just like the resonance frequencies of microtubule they are isolated in the time domain and then when uh, you change here that other others are also changing mm. so if, if you convert it into time crystal then you are able to create a quaternion quaternion tensor you remember three imaginary world and one real world so four by four matrix so four elements in the horizontal direction four elements in the vertical direction so that's how you get a tensor and you can represent such events then we come to figure uh, 10.1c uh, um, this is a summary of the whole brain uh, system mm, uh, so brain system means 10.1a the the egg that we want to sell in the market so that that egg mm, at, at the end of chapter 9 we showed you humanoid avatar so that is only for the research purpose that you cannot that we are not planning to sell in the market because humanoid avatar is to test the uh, the brain jelly and many other devices that we are building that will be for r and d purpose only that this is the egg kind of thing that we want to sell and then the egg will have many many small cells inside and those cells will be um, interacting with each other with time crystals and uh, it will have different domain of of uh, potential fluctuations at the top of the brain jelly those those key events are shown in figure 10.1 c now go to let's go to figure 
uh, 10.2. Figure 10.2 are some examples that uh, someone uh, has has really built a time crystal analyzer and like we did and then it uh, went on uh, to convert some information in terms of a quaternion. So very quaternion means it's inside a quaternion, inside a time domain, inside a particular time domain, say we're looking at a microsecond time domain, um, who does it or, um, or how, how did you do it? To get answer of those questions, you find a particular time domain, a lot of resonance frequency pick. And when you were trying to understand how, how, it, how, it, how it does, you can find 12 dimensions. That means 12 different kind of dynamics that we have described in chapter 2. But there are four layers of integration. Okay, So four, uh, if you would have been a Hindu, you would have said four locals. So in, in Hinduism, in Hindu scriptures, uh, they call each time domain um, have their own unit of time, uh, just like um, Brahma Loka have uh, say one billion years as as uh, that is the smallest time that humans can uh, or planet planet has also a rhythm and its time domain clock are different the clocks of subatomic particles are paramanu uh, so Hindus used to call subatomic particles as paramanu atom as uh, the lowest possible smallest unit that is anu. That is the smallest master. So they used to consider Paramanu. Paramanu was a temporal structure. Always remember. Paramanu was a temporal structure as suggested by Makkal Gosha in, um, during the um, 2600 years, 700 years back. They were he was com contemporary of Buddha and others, but he had a strong differences with Buddhism and the Jainism and um, of that time spiritual Hinduism. So he was materialistic Hinduism and he used to think that Paramanus, the uh, self assembly and create the whole universe. So there are four locals or four temporal time domains um, uh, for quaternion. And when there are 12 temporal time domains, that is for dodecanion. So we uh, take information from outside only as part of um, uh, quaternion. Okay. So each, each time domain can have 12 different dimensions. 12 different dimensions means you take a geometric safe, you go inside and find more geometric safes, you go inside. But those are all interconnected. I repeat, when you you have different time domains, these are different lokas. And Hindu script, Hindu stories, Puranas, story of Purana you can study in, in, uh, in Google and you will be able to understand how to travel from one loka to another loka or another time domain. So you go there, just like Mr. Topkins' story in in George Gamble's book, one, two, three, da, 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 infinity. Similarly, you can travel from one kind of imaginary world to another world, and you can find that uh, things are happening in a very different way. Okay, so uh, so this is this is how do you design experiment to understand um, um, other themes. Now, <clears throat> now um, we have visual dynamics. A peacock is dancing in the rain. And then you convert it into a quaternion and dynamics of a song, you classical song. So you listen to a song and, okay, this must be that kind of raga. Or a proprietor chef's son, I'm closing my eyes and I am in this room in the office. Today is Sunday, nobody is around. I'm here recording my last tutorial video of my lifetime work. And... Uh, Mm, and, um, and today is I'm in a very relaxed mood because uh, uh, this is the um, last explanation of the of the book and hopefully many people would be able to get into some part of it at least because even we are also diving in to learn many part of it. So basic structure, understanding love, uh, source of pay, play, pain and the bliss and all other kind of things and then you apply C2 symmetry, C3 symmetry, C5 symmetry, to find different kind of geometric shapes. Always understand, what would you do after you create in the sensors this kind of time temporal or dynamics? From the architecture itself, you are absorbing the information in terms of um, quaternion or the answer to a question. Please understand, this is not a small thing. Uh, Maharshi um, Patanjali in, in a Yoga Sutra in 200 or 300 BC, he suggested that if you want to understand the universal language or language of the universe, then you have to isolate word, 
is the literal meaning and the perception in the brain. Three things you need to isolate. Here you see what we have done. We have correlated with the geometric musical language the geometric shapes we are getting from the temporal dynamics and the geometric shape itself and we are assigning it to as an answer to a query. So we are never asking human perception to tell us. That is why figure 10.2 tells you the most fundamental application part of the artificial brain proposed in this book. So you look at the um, oscillation frequencies and you tell what is the information you know, written in those frequencies or oscillations or vibrations. That is called neurogenesis. And people have been trying to get neurogenesis for a long, long period of time in case of uh, conventional model of neuron firing. But we, as we have said in this book many times, that we do not think that neuron firing or nerve spikes are only thing. There are spikes or vibrations in the filaments also, in the proteins also, and also when neurons come together in the cortical column, they also vibrate in a very particular way. So every time domain or every loka, as said by uh, Hinduism, in this loka, every loka, um, you have different identities, different definition of time, different unit of time, and you can travel, information can travel conformally from one to another because there are only 15 geometric steps in every loka. You go, there are 15 primes in every loka you go. Uh, face prime matrix, matrices in every loka you go. So wherever you are going, uh, you are implementing it in terms of different forces and different uh, different forms, different kind of um, particles, different kind of uh, energy expenses or different phenomenon you are using. But conformally, you are connected to geometric musical language. Um, um, that is fundamental to it. And you are never asking anybody what is the physical significance. Who does it? When I try to give answer, it's my human perception and bias. When another person gives an answer, his perception and uh, bias. But when we are looking into the data, look at the geometrics, how they are changing relative to each other, then I'm not, that is not biased. That is a very clear cut rule said in figure 10.1D. And that is actually implemented here. So 10.2D tells you everything, everything about neurogenesis and then foundation of this particular brain model. So once you get this, visual dynamics or, or time crystal for proprioception, time crystal for dynamics of a song, time crystal for vis time crystal for understanding love or protein dynamics. So when you, when, you, when you get to this geometric structures, next is trying to rebuild the symmetry. So you get uh, two circles here and then inside that three circles. So there must be another situation when I have to create another alternate time crystal where I will have three and then inside that two. So two into three, three into two. So we try to rebuild the face prime metric or the temporal architecture. So I transform this seed dynamics of a song that I got with the sensor. So when I change it and, and rebuild newer, newer structures, just like um, um, 12, I, I found two, two into two into three. As soon as I found the two into two into three composition, I will not say it with that. I will see two into three into two, three into two into two, and all these possible compositions made of, uh, and then how, why do I make those changes? I make those changes because I would feed this time crystal to the face prime metric. What is the meaning of uh, feeding a particular time crystal to the, uh, to the face prime metric? It just means that you see the geometric structures, forget about everything, create, alternate possible symmetries, all possible symmetries. So 12, 2 into 3 into, uh, you see 2 into 6, you, you make 6 into 2 and all other options. And then when you, when you, when you, when you fill up all these possible things, you get a uh, geometric series. And then that becomes your fractal seed. And then you repeat because 2 into 6 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 and then what are, would be the compositions? Then you create this way different geometric series and uh, and uh, if you find that there are complex geometries for all those possible things for an example you are looking into proprioception time crystal and you find a three three uh, 
uh, red circles are there with, with squares embedded in it. And then that can create uh, three into three into three into three into three. Inside that more four, more four, more four. So three into four, three into four, three into four. You can repeat it and you can in the face prime metric and you can create an infinite series of geometric sets. So that is what we want to do. We want to create a fractal like complex uh, composition of infinite geometric sets in the phase prime metric following the phase prime metric so what happens is that the vibration actually in reality what happens if we have a set of oscillators and the oscillators are such a way it is designed that if you get a geometric shape all possible other compositions or vibrations are naturally generated in the hardware and then mm, that is actually repeats, repeats, repeats in different, 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 different time domains. So basically, you absorb it in the eyes in millisecond or second time domain. But even in the in the in the in the space of of microtubules, in somewhere you will find that that is getting repeated, repeated, repeated. So it's getting vibrated all the way down in different, different temporal time domains. So basically, an infinite series of geometric shape is created. Then that goes to infinity. So when when it goes to infinity, does it goes to another loka, another kind of universe? No, 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 no. It's in the same hardware. So it's just like a mirror is over there. So if you are vibrating all this kind of time domain, a image image potential is created, just like physics. You you create an image potential, so it's created, and then that is interacting with the original potential, and you get back. So that's like Ramanujan's uh, mathematics playing with shifting the infinity, and then you get back. So you will get back something different, some different geometric shapes and with much more uh, to it in that infinite series. And if you have a memory, um, um, as uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra says, that uh, your your perception when uh, coalesces or, or condens, forms a condensed set with the memory, it transforms into a new geometric shape, and that is your conscious experience. Exactly that happens happens here. So in phase five metric, um, we allow this with the, with the memory and others to expand to this um, geometric shapes and then they give you a solution. So purpose of designing the brain architecture. This is a table here. So you can go on, follow uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten steps. These are very, very key things. So if you have not studied the whole nine chapters, and then you come here and then you can summarize very, very key part. Mm, so I just loved it when I created this particular table, uh, this figure 10.2. Uh, so you have 11 imaginary worlds, uh, 14 sensor, 8D in, in the midbrain and 12D in the higher level brain. So you need three things. Junction and singularities between imaginary worlds are communicating, uh, communicating information, following a tensor algebra, and then when absorb all kind of uh, symmetries as ratio of integers. So basically, um, the, uh, number of components, brain components are, um, are like this. Um, so basically, we will be uh, creating prime number of cavities, one cavities, two cavities, three cavities, um, four cavities, uh, then five cavities. We'll put them together and generate. So it's just like this. So, so I make one big cavity as my whole brain, that is the egg shape. And then inside that, I will have two different domains. And then one is sensor, and another is that. But it doesn't matter. If I organically build all of them, and we allow them to vibrate and create two basically dipoles, subsimilar architectures, then that allows me to create situ symmetry and vibration. So any vibrations that we that goes in actually split into two different uh, temporal domain. That is called the situ symmetry. So this kind of, uh, um, as a ratio of primes, um, uh, all the elementary vibrations will be integrated. And that is not a very difficult, difficult thing to do. And how to do it, we have explained in details in chapter 7, while we were saying how to build the brain. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, um, so cavity resonator and direct resonator. Cavity resonator is like, it's like flute, and direct resonator is like tuning fork. And then I explained it in details earlier, so I'm not repeating it. I'm going directly to figure 10.3 and here neurogenic brain model and time crystal based brain model how do they differ so neuron neurogenic brain model are existing brain models all the existing brain models they only consider only one temporal time domain that is the millisecond time domain as absolute information processing domain and they don't go to higher temporal domains and lower temporal domains 
we go to all the possible temporal domains as different locals, as uh, uh, 3000 year old Hindu scripture suggests that you need to go to different different time domains. So I need to take I need to take into account many different protein vibrations and uh, filamentary vibrations, neuron vibrations, glial vibrations with the neuron cells, and then they make a complex. And then the cortical column vibrations, cortical column forms an assembly, their vibrations, or cortex vibrations, different organs vibrations in similar fashions. In the hippocampus, I go and I see that 17 different cavities are created by folding to these sets of this cortical column like structure that we called H3. Do you remember or forgot? Okay, so if you have forgotten, I remind you that the fundamental uh, decision making device of our brain model is H3. What is that H3? H3 is inductor. First um, generation inductor, second generation inductor, third generation inductor. How to go to different generations? You make H. H is a three concentric cylinder with a spirals. Each one has a spiral, and that that a spiral symmetry is the inductor device. Now that inductor device, when cell pass on with hexagonal close packing or different kind of close packing with other kind of structures, and then create H2 device, and then three of those units come together and form another. So triplet of triplet symmetry we have to have always there. Why do you want to do it? You, it is everywhere. Even if in Hindu philosophy, you will find that three lokas actually work together. One call, is called Sukshma loka, and that is uh, Ishara loka. Ishar doesn't mean God, okay? And Hindus uh, defined uh, Ishwar. Um, so many people who don't know the Hindu religion, they consider that it is all about God and other things. And I'm sorry, if you just read the scriptures and try to understand by yourself, it's not God. Ishwar is a concept that has been defined. It's a very particular entity, a particular perception, or a particular higher order time domain, where um, time is uh, uh, our conception, our perception or consciousness has a um, maximum time domain, okay, that we can perceive. And that one is a unit pixel for that bigger uh, clock. And uh, mm, mm, our human perception has the smallest time domain, okay? Uh, that is a pixel, mm, a small pixel of my circle that I can understand, or my clocks. And that small pixel inside that, if I go and make a journey, that is called Sukshma Loka. So these three layers of Lokas, I need to understand very clearly if I, if I want to make any decision or want to understand consciousness for who am I if I want to understand. So three minimum, that doesn't mean there in Hinduism there are 60 such layers of the whole universe and then if I know 12, I will be able to fathom what is happening in 60 layers. So that has been described very clearly how to do that. So Hinduism is absolutely not about uh, about religion or, or a kind of culture. And Hindu uh, um, uh, dance or Hindu classical music all are basically uh, a way of practicing um, how to do the mathematics in terms of music or singing. And uh, that's a way of doing mathematics. So it's not about writing. And then geometric shapes or other things are already there because of mudra. So you do hand and you, you put different kind of geometric shapes and then you do the mm, uh, geometric um, um, uh, engineering. Um, you can do it. You don't need to write it down on a piece of paper and then you, you, you got to do it. You can, you, you have, they've created dance, a different form of dance, and then you transfer from one geometric shape to another geometric shape and then you try to understand how to move from between different locus. So that's H3 device is the unit. It's described in details in chapter 8. So consciousness. Consciousness is actually... Uh, um, you have a phase prime metric and it projects infinite series, um, geometric infinite series. So how the how it gets the geometry? It from the normal world, whatever the events that are happening, they convert it into, they look into only the periodic events, periodicity of the undefined regions, periodicity of the undefined regions or singularity regions. And then they create this clock-like architecture, singularity point architecture. And from that architecture, uh, you, you create the whole geometric shapes and then you fit it uh, to the uh, PPM or phase prime metric. Uh, feeding to the phase prime metric, what is that? So uh, suppose you have a triangle, a square and something is there. It should be something like here also to make it symmetric. And then for three symmetry, when I go inside and I find um, temporal domain is very fast, so it must be time. Then I would go there and I will modify it. So in this way, um, 
uh, th this way we will uh, will be able to able to generate three infinite series to the top one can interact with the environment one is internal structures and uh, and and uh, and one is uh, is the whole universe i'm existing so that that kind of uh, information so three different kind of um, that kind of information could be processed simultaneously and they could coexist uh, and in three different kind of independent information structures anirban 1 anirban 2 anirban 3 so three anirbans are there anirban is conscious so something like that so it may not be absolute definition of consciousness but for the time being to realize the artificial brain we are sticking to this particular definition um, we are making it very clear cut direct specific hardware property and a feature that we want to see as an expression of consciousness more the technology would come you can redefine it you can cut it off and you can go but this define we we achieve certain set of technology certain set of devices so if that definition of consciousness is true then intelligence creativity adaptability plasticity universality learning thinking emotion growing all could be redefined in terms of <clears throat> new way of defining consciousness so that is the quality uh, that has been charted here uh, and then we come um, come to figure 10.4 where we have described uh, when computers like brain is essential mm -hmm. so when you have a huge data and that is rapidly changing you don't have any time to program then you need our kind of artificial brain in your industry and then when you have a black box, you have absolutely no information, a small amount of information, but you can't access it. Only you see the result. And then you have to also go. And then it's a beautiful way of, I have tried to put a beautiful way, but you cannot access and when you need our kind of computer. And, uh, and then Turing-based computing and artificial brain. What are the basic units? Bits, time crystal. So this is a very cute chart that we have created in 10.5, figure 10.5. But you can see that uh, earlier you had logic get, now we will have inductor, four circuit elements, a completely different thing. And com uh, those, um, and there will be circuit, and here no circuits. Mm, so basically, instead of circuit, you have quantum cloaking, so, um, or classical cloaking. Uh, so you, there is a device in the middle. In the time domain, I find, I, do, I see this one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So classical or quantum mechanics and here fractal mechanics, physically wired circuit and temporally wired circuit. This is another beautiful table in figure uh, 10.5. My favorite uh, because uh, because of cloaking, you have randomly arranged devices and then you put them together and you create a new kind of circuit. So when you make a decision in the, in the brain, uh, output is also a quaternion. Have you ever thought about this? Your entrance is quaternion, output is also quaternion. Quaternion, why? Because you express everything, all the solution, as a, as a temporal. Who, when, how, and where. Um, and who did it, at which condition, how he did it, and, um, and, uh, and where. So, uh, so what you do is in 12 dimensions, 11 dimensions, 7 dimensions, different the kind of information that you come, come due to the projection to infinity and feedback from infinity by first prime metric hardware. Then we again con con construct, a, um, uh, construct a quaternion, and that is actually how the solution looks like. So 10.5 has many cute things. What is first is steering best company and artificial brain, very clear, subtle differences. Mm -hmm. And then temporally wired circuit, we are in, we're do, uh, entering into the domain of artificial atoms, geometric shapes, and so other. There's no electron flow and no heating and something completely different and then you take one of the element and you can expand and you can find the time crystals within it so um, it could be 10 dimensional tensor and then seven dimensional tensor inside and they are constructing it so this is how actually mathematically how the decision in the brain would look like in future application uh, first of all you can find out missing cultural heritages uh, so social life of the, of the planet will be totally, totally transformed because many of the cultures, because of um, expansionism of uh, particular philosophies, um, particular religion, they, they converted um, people from other cultures and they destroyed their cultures and then forced them and brainwashed them that if you follow 
this particular cultures and habits that is the true way of, of moving to God. That was kind of a business proposition and by which um, many of the cultures and heritages have been destroyed in the planet. If we want to survive them and rebuild them and bring them back the way we are trying to bring different uh, animals back from extin extinction, faced by metric and the GML would help us to bring those missing parts and bits and pieces from the from the from the content geometric content of little bit that is left what would be the whole picture of the whole cultural thing we can rebuild that one because you see when you feed a set of geometric shapes and then dynamics to the P ppm it adds all possible geometric uh, shapes all possible possible symmetries and compositions and gives you in return what could be the possible looking thing so so you we, we get a small uh, just like a clue and we can generate the whole event uh, and physics and computer science so in physics you you always try to invent models and how do you do that you take uh, you do an observation some fact 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 facts and then what you do is bring those facts use your imagination link the facts build a model that model experimentally you repeat and then you find how much uh, is uh, fitting and how much non-fitting and then after that mm, uh, using that one mm, uh, what you do is uh, after the fit uh, you find out the differences and then um, then you change your your model uh, so change the imagination that you had how it would have been happening and then you with trial and error process with years after years you, de you define it but now we are suggesting completely different we go to the unknown find the architecture of confusion so find what you don't know you don't go and ask uh, what you know that is also um, philosophically darkness can have a distinct identity like a particle so it's a beautiful and very strong statement that we have to, and and un uh, architecture of uncertainties also hold a beautiful information so philosophy and physics and computer science are kind of correlated and and uh, so future application is one of the finest thing of this of this book that where we are heading to how we are going to change the world forever and um, so physics uh, rapidly changing big data and then uh, the unknown events you you know only few informations you go to the first prime metric and then you you add different symmetries okay if the event you are saying is possible by this then that is also possible so logical decision making which we were trying to perfect for many many years um, um i mean um, hindu religion has a um, has a history of 3000 years of perfecting logic so many of the logical book that you are seeing um, and uh, especially um, in the last 200 300 years you have seen in the west that is called tarka that is part of the Tarka Sastra. That is one of the uh, one of the hundreds of different schools that was in in Hinduism, and uh, and they used to always um, debate which one would be the best way to do uh, find a solution of a problem. So um, what you can do is uh, periodic, periodicity. They are connected and uh, connecting all the things, and then they were trying to build up the whole architecture. Um, so. We can invent many physics laws and then find man's dream that all physics laws would be explained in terms of changing geometric shape. That will come true uh, with uh, PPM and uh, GML. Uh, medical science. So medical science and chemistry and biology is going to change forever because uh, normally in the medical science, uh, you try to see a whole body as a collection of systems, but um, uh, PPM, GML, uh, follows a philosophy that every single uh, body parts are integrated as a resonance chain in a in a in, in an integrated time crystal architecture. So imagine that in the future you are going to a hospital, and then the doctor puts many 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 sensors on your body, and you will look at look into it, look into him, and then you find that uh, uh, okay, um, you, you know, these are the clock architectures in your body. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, it doesn't look very, uh, very normal. So whatever we're going to do is, we are going to add some new rhythms in this part, this part, this part of your body, and that would actually change this particular rhythm. So in 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 front of you, he puts additional sensors and sends some signal at different different organs of your body and changes your thing, uh, clocks, and then very soon, uh, maybe in 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 a few hours, it is found that your body is naturally. 
retrieving uh, the natural clocks and once it is it is it is done it is coming back those sensors or those signals are actually attached to your body and you are sent to home and then in home in a few days or uh, in one days or very very rapid time um, you recover totally so uh, it's not about medicine it's just about giving rhythms it could be could be some chemicals added to to change your um change your chemical rhythms um ionic rhythms but it will be all about changing the time crystals now imagine chemistry chemistry you you knew about a normal condensation process and two material come together and coalesces but at many different energy levels so so normally uh, in bose einstein condensation you know that um, at the ground level atoms come in and all the atoms come together and then they become a single giant atom a uh, single wave function and in frolic condensation um, proposed in 1969 and that um, uh, proposal was um, 1979 i think um, and that proposal was that at um, the one energy level higher excited state many other uh, other vibrating systems come and then they form a coalescence um, that is also also another part but fractal condensation that we have proposed in chapter 9 uh, so three new things that we have uh, proposed in in chemistry one is fractal condensation which was never proposed before that is different energy levels so it is different from frolic condensation frolic condensation talks about one we say that in in some of the energy levels there are um, uh, uh, there are certain symmetries which are prohibited so uh, there could be multiple energy levels and you could you could simultaneously Uh, put uh, different different molecules in those vibrational states so instead of condensing in one level in different different symmetries in different energy levels you condense and different different imaginary worlds um, in tensor you can find the condensation is happening simultaneously they are interacting with each other and exchanging energy following the dodecanian tensor algebra and also uh, fractal reaction kinetics fractal reaction kinetics tells us that Uh, one kind of chemical reaction is going on another kind of chemical reaction is going on another kind of chemical reaction is going on but it could be that the, the the dynamic process of this creates a periodic changes and that periodic change is affecting that one which is in normal chemical or normal chemistry you can't see or you can notice and uh, finally biology and biological systems they mm, they always look into one kind of time domain molecule molecule and finish and on molecular chemistry finish uh, but it could be that all time domains are working together and then they would be able to see that uh, in different pathways uh, you find in cancer or alzheimers mm, uh, different temporal uh, temporal pathways they are actually mm, mm, could be mapped uh, you have a 3d vibrational architecture on 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 that different pathways are going through a logical process uh, so when you map the whole time crystal infinite number of pathways in cancer evolution there are many many pathways that has been discovered in the last 50 60 years of cancer research and you can you can actually find that that uh, the uh, that, uh, the whole body is a, it's not zombie uh, the mutation is happening different pathways and it is you are blocking one pathway then another pathway is taken because it has a 3d structure so the 3d time crystal like map uh, creating time crystal like map for every single rhythmic structures in the whole body would change the way we look into biology or systemic science systemic biology finally machines of the future machines of the future is uh, in a it's not about power uh, we are harvesting uh, thermal noise and different kind of noise because if you have a temporal domain in the electromagnetic domain of 5 um, to 6 terahertz domain if it's part of the resonance chain um, a biological machine biologically mimicked machine that you are creating if you have many time domain and it includes 5 to 6 terahertz domain then due to resonance chain and conformal um, energy transmission you can have energy transmission all throughout the chain so that is what we have claimed in this book as as one of the things and we have already patented uh, this particular technology of how to build a resonance chain and use uh, and keep uh, thermal resonance there with a very particular um, change of symmetry and when we keep that change of symmetry here also in other time domain means different loka by hinduism different imaginary worlds and many many so then what happens is 
due to conformal subsimilarity of oscillations, uh, you can interact from here to here and then that one here to here and that one there, following Duodecanian algebra that is described in chapter chapter four, chapter four. So we will have uh, uh, um, uh, nearly conscious machines um, uh, that is um, actually giving you an idea of how to do that, um, how to build uh, self-operational systems. And the uh, universe has a fundamental language. Philosophically, we are finding that language. Uh, chapter 2 is actually about that. And uh, um, you can do complex mathematics simply by drawing. So Philosophy-wise, a huge, huge step uh, forward in, uh, in, this, in this book. So what are the research products? So time crystal uh, summary, because I have already told many times in this book. Uh, summary uh, is a time crystal analyzer I have told many times. Then time crystal synthesizer and geometrical musical language generator. So you, 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 you generate time crystal structures and you can talk to any animals. Mm. You can make a conversation with, with the clouds, with, um, with the chemical, complex chemical reactions that is going on or any animals or living systems. Even with the planet Earth, its ecosystem, you can never think of even talking to them. But when you understand its language, definitely you can talk back. So that is kind of number two, is the most futuristic sci-fi technology. All these 10, all these 10 products are sci-fi products. Number three is that, um, so, so uh, 23 or 29 um, different channels, vibrations or rhythms are there. Um, for human emotions, Hindus created um, ragas with, with, um, with, uh, with maximum of um, 47 or 48 um, different kind of um, primes, but it up to prime 48 and then also 51 and then in some cases uh, 67, um, uh, but not more than that. So 66, 67, 68, 69, uh, they confine themselves, that kind of rhythms. And then all these rhythms integrate with each other following different kind of patterns. So, uh, uh, raga, Indian classical raga, could be used um, um, for medical science. And uh, that is uh, Musibots, uh, number eight. Uh, we have already created uh, several small tiny machines, uh, which is like a life form. All these key features are there and they talk, uh, talk like that. We can advance it with PPM, phase primetric and geometric musical language, and create some more complex life form. That is nanoscale. Um, very small. They can we can talk to virus and then evolution, just like COVID nineteen. We can talk to it, and cascade condensation incubator. incubator number nine. That is um, uh, primate goo. We call it. <laughs> it's cute. Um, primate goo because uh, uh, in Avatar movie you saw that uh, they were creating in the in the in the big jelly box. So we want to create that one. Mm. And the dielectric scanner. So dielectric scanner we have already created. It's over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I can show you. Mm. Let me try. Can you see far distant places? There are some scanner-like thing. Two scanners. Those two scanners are actually um, one of them is dielectric scanner. The, both of them are dielectric. Uh, one uh, dielectric scanner and the magnetic scanner. Magnetic scanner is because we want to create. Uh, we want to. We are now developing instruments here uh, to look at the vortices. So basically, we want to see. We want to. Uh, we want to show that. Um, uh, human brain for, uh, and the body system, they communicate with artificial atoms. Um, and our perception that electrical signals is doing everything or uh, electromagnetic or uh, mechanical is not the right thing. Actually, um, actually, it's an artificial atom or artificial molecular structure synthesis. And that is actually um, mutually interacting with the system and hardware itself and changing. So when you create artificial atoms by redesigning materials, um, when you create the, mm, the the vortex structures or time crystal architecture, that time crystal structure is fit to it with a fish by metric when it goes to infinity and comes back, then it changes the origin of hardware itself. So the information structure and the hardware changes by itself. So that that we want to build, that we want to synthesize using number nine, this cascade condensation incubator. The fourth circuit element inductor is number seven, which I have told in chapter eight in details. Uh, simultaneous electrical, mechanical, and magnetic resonance. So that will be the kind of um, way we want to build many different kind of machines in the future. Because if you want to do some hard work, um, machines means it will do work. 
So um, earlier you had algorithm and you move parts by part. But here e square plus pi square equal to pi square. This principle will be used for robotics. Um, so it is we, can, we may call it e pi phi robotics. Um, so um, not algorithm and um, and then uh, machine part. No. So when e pi phi based integration electrical mechanical and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, magnetic resonance would be there so signaling so magnetic is a key information structure time crystal structure and then electrical is kind of i take information or even conformally from the magnetic time crystal to the electrical time crystal and then electrical time crystal you know, sends it to the mechanical time crystal so mechanical time crystal um, and electrical time crystal and then uh, uh, then um, magnetic time crystals they interact with each other following some identities and when it will happen that will be a completely new kind of robotics that we are going to going to invent and of course number five it is not a technology but we want that every single kid in this planet earth draw circles and then they do the complex mathematics extremely complex mathematics just by drawing circles and putting on top and down bottom and something like that and then they don't use integers mm, of course they would learn integers but integers would come in normally so big big mathematics they would see in their pattern geometrically they will process in the brain and then they will just write down the numbers afterwards so convert it into numbers so basically uh, basically circular algebra or or circular geometry you feed it with with uh, uh, numbers one two three four da, 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 nine and then you get output then again one two three four five six seven eight nine mm, six seven eight nine so basically in the brain you 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 use only geometric shapes okay it will transform into that into that into that it's very easy to do in your brain compared to direct mathematics so that kind of mathematics we have created in chapter four mm, so you can do that and big data analyzer so big data shrinker so you will have a egg with a u and then then big data it will it will process immediately and it will it's going to tell you what is happening going to happen in the future so that kind of technology and number three is is um, uh, different primes and then classical music and classical dance uh, is already there in india we want to transform this uh, classical dance and classical music and make a little little, little changes so that uh, you can do mathematics using singing and then solve complex problems and then geometrically represent and feel um, how to how that transformations are happening using Indian classical dances. So basically um, we will use those to see how the neurons and nerves are actually changing the raga or the geometric vibrations we will fit it back to the neurons. They have been practicing for thousands of years. They are saying that that actually transforms you. We will see how it transforms the time crystals of the neural communication and something. So in this way, uh, uh, we will create a life that is very different from the current civilization. How would that look like? I'm not interested. I just inter I'm just interested that it should be um, you know, it should be synchronous to the universe as a whole. So in uh, uh, figure six, uh, figure eight. Um, uh, ten point eight. You'll see many kind of setups uh, that are there. Uh, not very interesting. Just just how it looks like. In the left side, you will find that we put the coaxial probes inside the neuron system to understand how the interactions are happening. Then, um, then there are optical setups, many kind of, uh, and then time crystal analyzer we have built. Mm, the faster version, and there are many other versions of it also. And then um, throughout the throughout the book, actually, we found that. Certain numbers are very important for some reason because primes are controlling everything. So that's why it is a uh, whole brain has very fond of um, uh, certain numbers. And that is actually in mathematics, physics, and biology, we have outlined just to get a grip that these are the numbers coming. There is no absolute magic number. And then uh, you come to figure 10.10, 10.11. These two figures are all about the triplet of triplet symmetries and uh, evolution of life form. So we have created a new evolution of life form. We have tracked evolution of life form in terms of time crystal structures. So one major application of geometric musical language is to is to is to estimate how the evolution is occurring. So it's a very small thing, but it has very big repercussions because um, uh, evolution theory as per now, uh, there is no mathematical equations or something or even a tool to estimate 
that figure um, 10 point uh, 10 and 10 point 11 is a, is a simple effort to say that uh, these are the new kind of species that, that are going to be born and and um, what would be its vibration structures or time crystal architectures in that sense 10.11 is the uh, is the um, is ultimate because if you have uh, because if you see 12 locals or 12 imaginary worlds one inside another is a human but why 12 why not say 16 why not 18 why not 24 why not 27 why not 28? Why not 30? Why not 32? Why not 36? So that we have listed here. So you go to a many different, far distant planet where you don't see humans. But you see that, um, uh, um, you see that um, uh, they have very different kind of um, fundamental basis. Suppose they have uh, 36 uh, different locus, one inside another. Then, um, suppose, um, we have 12 square Dwaraganian into Dwaraganian tensor, um, hmm, and Dwaraganian tensor, uh, and hexatriadeganian tensor. They are processing. So Dwaraganian tensor up to Dwaraganian tensor we have processed, and um, we have said that we can um, we reach the first level of consciousness, our conscious machine. But that is not the end. Um, so with the Dwaraganian algebra, you get um, consciousness. That means three different infinite series geometric series are fit fit to the infinity and you, you get a feedback and then uh, you process information but mm, when you have 36 um, basically three different conscious states like humans will be there and that will create another topology for the first time so when you reach to that level of that planet well, whether that exists in the universe we don't know but we predict that if you reach to that level then their consciousness you cannot understand even even if you go to 24 if if you go to a to a to a planet in in, in a far distant galaxy where you have um, twenty four different imaginary worlds one inside another, so you 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 would require quadi you know, tensor. So in new algebra you have to invent. So we have already published paper how to invent new kind of algebras. So you don't have to wait for two hundred years. That's like mankind waited for two hundred years to to get Dodecan in algebra that we invented. But Dodecan and algebra actually tells you that the promise is infinite. I mean, you can do wonderful things. You can learn wonderful things with this kind of algebra. So how to invent new algebra? We have already outlined in our published paper. You can follow that one uh, on Dodecan and algebra. And we have said up to 20 dimension how to do that. But if you go to 24, you see two consciousness states. So humans have consciousness and another consciousness. So if two are um, interacting with each other and generate additional dynamics, that will be first higher than human consciousness that you would observe. But when triangle, you will not be able to fathom even that species. Anything you do, you will be just like an extremely primitive expression compared to that level of consciousness. So basically, it means that you have a first prime metric that is generating three different kind of uh, infinite series and getting a feedback. But that one will have three phase prime matrices and three of them triplet of triplet will go and then will come up so you will not only get a triangular shape topological to self run you will get a hierarchy of that also so that is the ultimate machine that you can have then at the bottom garden of <laughs> garden of garden with respect to garden of garden that is one of the most beautiful thing of this book we have not discovered it garden of meander flowers was discovered in 1970 to 2002 explain an extremely spontaneously operating highly high intelligent machine and uh, garden of garden is actually we have used we have proposed we have we have advanced it so that you can mm, explain the human brain model but when you go to that kind of uh, galaxies and discover that humans that that race whether it will be human or no i don't know but when you discover that mm, that will be the uh, that will be garden of garden of garden of garden <laughs> something like something like that with that uh, i would like to wish um, all of you a great success in understanding the book and then maybe when i will die many 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 years from later some humans will go to the external galaxies and will discover that kind of conscious machines and experience that kind of conscious machines and if that happens um, that will be uh, i will not be there definitely mm, but uh, <laughs> that is certain. There's no confusion about it. But uh, that would be uh, my dream.
I don't know whether that has any meaning or not, but that is it. So thank you very much. So please go through all the tutorials and try to understand. I have tried my best. But if you have any questions or concerns, now you can write, you can you can put for that particular chapter at the comment section of the videos in my YouTube channel. And then I'll definitely, definitely reply you back. Thank you so much.